Good evening and welcome to The Pink and Show, our dedicated Canary shenanigans that's been lying down in a quiet room since that game on Saturday. I'm Michael Bailey, good evening to you. Welcome to Carrow Road at our new regular live time of 6pm. Uh, we are here because, well why wouldn't we be, uh, this place certainly saw something special at the weekend. But also cities under 23s begin their Premier League International Cup campaign tonight against Athletic Bilbao. Uh, so while everyone else uh, laps it up in the Tampa Bay Sun, Dave Freezer, we include you. Uh, we thought we'd show uh, these guys a little bit of love. So over the next 30 minutes or so, we will relive the glory of Saturday's epic encounter, stare at the championship table for a good five minutes, top and bottom, ask whether Stuart Webber is off to Southampton, wonder what else Daniel Farker needs to do to get a new contract, and whatever else we can think of in the next uh, half an hour or so. And we'll do all this in the company of our top pair this evening, laced with insight. There you go, boys, laced with insight. Uh, Eastern Daily Press at Chief City correspondent Paddy Davitt and Press Association sports journalist and City fan Jim Van Wyck. Gentlemen, how are you? Jim, first of all, I'm so sorry you're back out in the cold uh, since sinkhole. I know, you only have me on here when it's freezing, don't you? So, a beast from the east coming next week as well, so that'll be about Is that right? right it? Oh, apparently so. What, another one? Yeah, no, it's going to drop, yeah, it's going to drop, so uh, yeah, we won't be, uh, won't be, won't be um, surfing anytime soon, I don't think, unless you're in Tampa. <laughs> don't rub it in, don't yeah, rub it in. No, no. We're not in Tampa, are we, Pad? But there we go, Dave's Tampa. holding the fort. Yeah, but I think he probably would have liked to have been here Saturday afternoon, round about, uh, where were we, 4.50 at that end of the ground. So, uh, yeah, I just tweeted actually a picture out. It's uh, considerably quieter than it was at said Saturday, 4.50. So, yeah, we're looking forward to tonight's game. Actually, now we've seen the team. Todd Campwell's in it. So, um, yeah, that's certainly worth watching, how he's uh, you know rocked up after the hamstring problem so um, other than that though any of the other lads who didn't go out there Ben Marshall Evo Pinto Tete um, not involved tonight but yeah let's see how Todd gets on should be quite an interesting game it should be and we will talk about it in a bit now we are live at uh, pinkin.com and of course the Pinkin Facebook page we want to hear from you too be it on that Millwall finish that City Finn that Carrow Road Din that Weber Spin but especially uh, your trips across the world that have seen you stumble across a Norwich City connection that of, of course is in honour of the Canaries seeing what they can learn from a week in the Florida Sun of Tampa Bay you can get all those through to us here at Carrow Road connect permitting i think we're all all right so far uh, simply post your words below the live feed on the pink and facebook page feed uh, the fact that it's a pink and facebook page is quite important and they will ping right through to my phone which i have makeshift onto a wonderful <laughs> tripod in its own right so all being well i uh, will go through your messages uh, mark woods has put a thumbs up johnny wood said good eve says good evening chaps and uh, tony bistrom says hello michael is drew weber off to southampton or is it false question mark we will get to it we will get to it, Tony, uh, so keep those messages coming in. Uh, now, uh, we are more than a third of the way through the season and things are getting serious, well, uh, a little bit. Uh, fortunately, there's still room for, well, actually, there's not room for an oversized stuffed cow. We've left Wesley Moulihan uh, at home, but we have got the child's bike horn. That is Onel Hernandez. Jim, <coughs> this is <laughs> this week's Canaries headlines. <coughs> Just look at his face. Temu Puki defies all football logic to slot home a 90 plus 7 minute winner and earn City one of the most epic victories this stadium has ever seen. Top of the league, we're having a laugh. <coughs> hey, Mr. Tampa Bay man. Oh dear, that's terrible. Yes, our esteemed colleague David Freezer is currently supping pina coladas and trying desperately to keep hold of the Canaries' coattails of Daniel Farquhar and Stuart Webber as they enjoy a week of warm weather training and commercial opportunity in Florida. Paddy and I are in no way jealous. Uh, you can follow Dave's updates on our shiny new Pinkan app. Just search Pinkan uh, in the App Store or Google Play with the football part of Dave's schedule kicking in on Thursday. <coughs> Not such a saintly move. While Daniel Farker remains reassuringly relaxed over his own contract situation, Tuesday night saw Southampton linked with a swoop for Stuart Webber. Not that they know yet, according to the national reports. Uh, I'm sure they'll let us know when they do know that they will be making that move, if indeed they do make that move. Uh, at least Norwich City are on to a good thing at the moment. Their own hand is reasonably strong in both cases. And finally... <coughs> free football! Yes, uh, the Canaries under 23s may be missing out on Florida, Todd Campbell included, uh, but they have their own big, their own big deal to sort out tonight. Uh, the Premier League International Cup is an eye-catching tournament, and after a few sticky 
weeks plus the departure of boss Matty Gill to those down the road. Something positive against Athletic Bilbao will definitely prove welcome. Wolfsburg and Tottenham awaiting the future group games. So here's to a positive start for David Wright's boys. One final hoot. Sorry, I put, oh, it, put away. it away. No, that's right. I got it out of my pocket. <laughs> I thought you'd get the chance to maximise it and the way it's Lucky. reverberating Lucky. around. You, uh, well, no, actually, you can't. We need no it next expenses. week. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right. Unless you want to come back and do it every oh, week. Every week, I'm cold. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. gents, yeah, let's get, we'll send Jim for a, walk, a run in a minute to keep him warm. But um, Ooh, dear, uh, before we get stuck into tonight, let's re reflect a bit on the weekend, shall yeah. we? Uh, what a win it was, Jim. Incredible. And um, right up there with some of the classic games this, this stadium has, has witnessed. I think it was. Uh, but, I mean, spare a thought for all the... Uh, poor people up here in the in the press box like Paddy must just be pushing delete 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 you know if you've got your intro written and then thrown out the window but I, I just think it shows the sort of the character that this side have got at the moment that um you know never never say die and um and I was working a shift on Saturday and and the updates and the when they kept going back to Cairo they had another goal at Cairo and the, you know the fan of you thinks well you know which way is this one going to go and you know it's amazing really that um you know they pulled it off in in stoppage time to have a seven goal thriller pad but no sides you know score you know leading by more than a goal it was a proper in yeah. terms although the finish was was incredible that the whole game itself was just such such a topsy-turvy event I think there was a good tweet I think you retweeted it where there was a, just a list of stats emanating from that game you know historical stats just to put it in context that I think one of them that immediately springs to mind was it five goals after the 70 whatever minute yeah. which you just stop and think five goals in the final not even final quarter, but probably final 15 minutes. Just a um, phenomenal game. You know, we've discussed it at length, but it still feels like you could discuss it for some while yet because it's like uh, it's like you're unwrapping something and there's always there's always a new layer when you get around to discussing it. <laughs> you know, it's just... Um, I mean, we talked about it on, the, uh, on our podcast, Pink and Podcast, the other day. It was the Newcastle game from last season, or a couple of seasons ago, sorry, under Alec Neal on Tyneside when Norwich were leading 3-2 in stoppage time to White Gale came to the party 4-3 and just how everybody felt connected with Norwich that day so the reverse was um, you know just delicious really and uh, yeah that, that will live long in the memory that one um, and it's funny, again talk about that Newcastle game that really kicked Newcastle on that season didn't it so I, I guess in the same way that when sides throw something away Norwich's season just unravelled I mean how much can we think that Norwich could kick off on from a result like that well I think Paddy, you you kind of uh, put it out on, on on your Twitter as well when you you know you said on, on these kind of things promotion campaigns you know are built. I mean, look, long long way to go yet, but you know it's, it's momentum in the championship and the, and the team who's got momentum at the moment you know is is, is is Norwich City with everything with everything they're doing. So you know things are you know are, are progressing well as, as a unit now with this squad and it's just that attitude of. You know, never knowing when they're beating and looking to overrun teams, which has been installed uh, by the by the new head coach. Dan, can we have a quick look at the top of the table? Can you sort that for us? Here comes the PA. Steve did uh, keep it off uh, off track for a little bit, but he's giving me a wave, so that's absolutely fine, obviously. And as long as his music choice is good. Um, Don Goodman actually said over the course of the weekend that he, he likened Norwich's situation to that of Cardiff's, because I think Cardiff were completely out of contention as a promotion candidate before the season started. It really became clear quite early that they were probably going to hang around. So is that a fair likeness, do you think, Brad? It's certainly in regards to a team who nobody would have fancied to be in and amongst the, as it is this season, the Derbys, the Middlesbroughs, Villa, um, Forest even. They've spent a lot of money in the last sort of transfer window. So, yeah, I think we do get swept away and it's inevitable with correlating how much money's been spent on a squad and how much wages a club are playing and with where they can realistically aim for. But you talk about Cardiff there, Michael. I mean, let's go back and it's pertinent because we'll, it links the Stuart Webber bridge, if you like. But Huddersfield, who who would have realistically felt that Huddersfield team under Wagner that season could go and do what they did? But anybody who saw them against Norwich in both the games, down here and at Huddersfield, they would they were an excellent team of players who... Everybody knew their jobs. They had a, a system and a philosophy that was so effective week in, week out. And as Jim says, at the minute, that does look like Norwich. Um, Tampa Bay, Norwich gone for a bit of uh, warm weather training, as we've mentioned only three times tonight already. Um, teams do this sort of thing, don't they, Jim? Do they, do they work? Do they help? Well, I, I think so. I mean, look, we all know part of it is um, you know, to, to do with the sponsorship type, the commercial, and that's you know, very important. And, and, and it's going to be an important part of the, of the club going going. Uh, forward hopefully but I was listening to Cedric Arsenal on uh, Radio Norfolk as he's coming in and said sometimes taking the group of players away 
from the goldfish bowl, if you like, um, and having you know ten days uh, out of the uh, spotlight of everyone focusing on them and saying how they're going to do when they get back to playing you know football. That can actually be a you know be a positive, be a positive as well. And, and as you said, Paddy, some of the guys there, if you know, a few niggles and things, you know, a little bit of sun and um, that you know that can do them the world of good. Absolutely, yeah. I think. Um yeah, of course, there's a commercial dimension to it. I mean, Daniel was, I thought, very candid on Friday when I asked him about it, that he, he kind of talked that up and then obviously then added the football dimension on, onto it. And, um, you know, probably if, if you're looking at purely through the football in terms, taking a group of players nine hours away with the time difference and, and the travelling isn't probably the best thing on that level. But... You know, we're here, we're here freezing tonight, and um, I think uh, with the time difference, they're probably training at the moment. I think their first training session was Wednesday afternoon their time. Guarantee it's probably 25, 26 <laughs> degrees. So um, three or four days in that environment, uh, you've got to feel the benefits, I think. Um, and they've they've still got a winning get back Sunday. They've still got a full week leading into Swansea. And the reality is, you know, there's quite a few lads away on international duty. So it's always, I'd imagine, that first international week of a break is always quite disrupted and quite low-key anyway because simply you haven't got the bodies on the training pitch, have you? Bang on, bang on. OK, we'll carry on the uh, discussion in a moment. Uh, Dave Freezer, as I said, is in Tampa. You can follow all his video updates uh, on the new Pinkin app, but especially Pinkin.com, so keep an eye out over there. Let's have a look at some of your messages, shall we? If I can go through these, we we'll maybe rattle through a couple of quick questions if we can, uh, if we can do just that. Um, well, why why did Todd Campbell not go to Miami? Well, I guess he's, he's been injured, hasn't he, Pads? So. Yeah, he's missed last three games four I mean he was on the bench but he didn't get on did he um, so he's effectively missed four games I think with the hamstring nature of that injury do you want him sat on a plane for nine hours probably not let him have a run out tonight and uh, you know he's probably going to feel the benefit of that more than as I say a long haul flight and uh, just training over there so yeah and, and in terms of the other guys who haven't gone you know Tete um, I think he's just had a, a kid or rather his wife has so probably wants to spend a bit of time with the family and um, you know Pinto to, to the same degree Marshall's a bit of an interesting one unless I've misread it I don't think he's over there in Tampa so if he isn't um, you'd think he could have had a run out tonight as well so you know they, they know what they're doing obviously indeed uh, that's Mark Newstead thanks for your question Mark uh, what else have we got here uh, Lisa Jack what would you say if Ipswich and Lambert come knocking for Nelson Oliveira in January Jim Sorry, I, I just that whole thing, Paul Lambert going back to Ipswich. I know, I know, I shouldn't be bothered. There's just a tiny little bit of me that that is bothered. But anyway, look, you know, good, you know, good luck to him, and let's, uh, you know, let, let's see what he can do down there. But um, Nelson's not, not in the picture at the moment, is he? Um, he? He certainly got the ability, but Paddy will, will will have a better insight than I have. You know, maybe he's, he's not the type of uh, the right character that, that you know the. Daniel Farker is looking for at the moment, and you know that's shown. It, and you can't really argue with the guys who who are coming in. Would Norwich would the would the squad miss him? He's not even on the bench at the moment, is he? So no, nah, the ship sailed definitely. Um, it's now just how you manage his exit, basically. And for me, because there is a player in there, and we've all seen it in bursts. A very good player, in fact. I would not be sending him anywhere near Ipswich. I wouldn't give them any help whatsoever, <laughs> because you can guarantee very fanciful but if that was to happen he would be desperate to come back here and put one over he'd probably stick something in the claw in, in his yeah. loan claws wouldn't you that, that he couldn't play oh, but then God. again if he's scoring goals well, against Norwich's rivals why'd in a way you, that might why do you want him Norwich, keeping them so. up you don't want that yeah. do you why well, would no, you want no, him no, keeping them up we don't want them down do we we'll we be don't in want a down. different division to them anyway next season so, <laughs> you know no need to worry about that well Fair probably enough. yeah we will be if we stay down or will go up so there we go our colleague in Ipswich Stuart Watson just put one tweet up saying him Lambert, Lambert, give us a wave from the Ipswich fans. Yeah. Just sounds weird, doesn't it? Yeah. Just, just sounds weird. I know. I know. Um, so, top stuff. And Ben Harold asks uh, one, or says, states really, one topic to work on in Tampa penalties. Penalties? Penalties. As in trying to put them in. Leather it, man. Isn't that what you said? Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah. But uh, <laughs> as the boys come out behind us. But uh, I don't know. Funny enough, I did my column on it um, today. And uh, Matt Letizia, 47 out of 48 in his career um, and he basically found some quotes where he was more or less saying it's about technique and it's about practice and literally um, he would approach the ball and side foot it and he'd always pick the corner he was going but his, he was so good he, he practiced so often that 
if the keeper was going that side, he, he could literally manipulate it to go the other end angle. So <laughs> that's a very simplistic way of looking at it because all the penalties we've seen in the four that they've missed have been shocking penalties. And I know Daniel had plenty to say about the keeper being off his line the other day, but if you stick it in the other corner, then it doesn't really matter if he was off his line. So I think somebody just needs to uh, step up, take the first one, and, and hopefully if they get any more, then, you know, that we won't be talking it's, about it's it. It'll be, just be academic. And it's got to be a confidence thing as well, Absolutely. I think, Michael, with the, you know, with the players. A lot of managers say, you know, they, they want to let, let whoever's confident take, you know, take the penalty, whether they've got a specifically a designated penalty striker or not. But Norwich are probably now on number four. You know, you, you and I might get one pad, mate. Yeah. Well, you will, mate, anyway, mate. Sure, the thing is, time. it comes an issue, doesn't it? It becomes yeah. an issue. OK, well, uh, let's move on to the debate, shall we, to uh, the speculation we've had over this week. Uh, I think actually we should start with Friday, Pad, because that was the first opportunity we've heard from Daniel Farco and his contract situation for a while. You can obviously see what he said over at pinkin.com. Um, you asked him about it. He's out of contract in the end of the, uh, in the summer, um, but he doesn't seem particularly... Uh, what's the word? Well, he seems relaxed about it, I suppose. He's not going too deep with it, mate. No. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I said this again post that conference, but... He's not exuding signals of a manager who, or a head coach who's not sure what his future holds. I think he's on the same page as Stuart Webber, who's on the same page as the board, is my take on it. So I, I think, I'm not saying it's an academic thing, but I, I think there's a will on all parties um, to ensure that he does stay beyond the end of his contract. But obviously the mechanics of it are probably not there yet. And until they are, then the fear is he continues to win games like this. He continues to keep Norwich at the top. It's not really about what's happening internally, it's who is looking at him in terms of other clubs here and in Germany potentially as well. So until he's actually put pen to paper, that would be a concern. But I don't think there's their poles apart in terms of how they see the vision of this club and what they're trying to do. And if you're Daniel Farker, you've put so much graft in, you've had to really work so hard to get to this position now, why would you then step aside and let somebody else potentially take on this group to bigger and better things? So. I'd be reasonably confident that they hopefully will be able to get something done, but the longer it isn't done, it's going to continue to be a talking point, isn't it? And again, they've uh, brought in a new first-team coach, uh, as far as we know. Oh, their club confirmed it, didn't they, on Saturday? Christopher John, who um, was at Farkas Old Club Paderborn, or Paderborn 2, wasn't it? I think there's so connections there all over, of course. Um, and Barry Newman asks, why haven't the club signed Farker on an improved contract to at least get some decent comp compensation if he goes? Which is obviously the classic Norwich way of looking at it. I think so, but but also maybe do we have to take a step back and, and have a dose of realism? Um, you know, the, the, the reality is we saw saw the financial accounts recently. If things don't go right on the pitch this season, then Norwich have a really really big financial hole, you know, to fill um, to fill in the summer. And you know, you might be looking at a manager taking a completely different view of the club and and, and where he's going. Daniel Fark, a very ambitious young, and now we can see, clearly see a very talented coach. And it's taken him some while, as Paddy pointed out, to get to the team. Uh, this is his team now, and he's now showing what he can do. Uh, and I think we should also not overlook the lure of, uh, of Germany. He's very, very highly regarded, uh, even more so than Wagner at, uh, at, at Dortmund, and, and, and we can see why now. Um, Stuart Webber then, that's a nice little segue into, into his future because uh, in case you didn't see the reports, Southampton, they're having a proper root and branch review of what's going on at St Mary's, it's fair to say. And one uh, position they're looking for is a new technical director and the suggestion is that Stuart Webber is on their list that they want to uh, recruit and the report suggested that Southampton would do that um, and maybe think about who they're going to approach in a couple of weeks' time with Stuart Webber being on the list. Jim, how do you see that? Well... The, the guys who put the, that piece together, um, you know, they're very well, very well connected. Um, so there will be substance, you know, will be substance to that. That, you know, and and it shouldn't become as much of a surprise really that he'd be on a potential list. You know, it's only a list, isn't it, of potential candidates that that could that could come in. But, um, would he want to go all the way? You know, uh, uh, down to the, down to the south coast again. I guess it, it, it just depends on it, like anything how he sees his own career progression. Um, is there a ceiling at, at, at Norwich? Probably. Is that any bigger at, at Southampton? You know, there's an argument that maybe 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 it's a it, it's a, a more of a of, of an environment where you know he's going to have a more sort of financial stability. But um, 
I wouldn't be surprised to see something, you know, uh, happen with with Stuart one way or the other, you know, going um, go, going forward. As as Paddy said, in you know, in in, in the structure here, how things want to be uh, want to be set up. I mean, it feels like we, we know this speculation is going to come along, Pad, don't we? But whether Southampton would be the the, the first choice on Stuart's list, list if things came along, I don't know. Well, I mean, it, it does feel like there's over the last. I mean, they were very very um, close to being. You know, going the other way last season, I think they just turned it around at the end, didn't they? In terms of relegation, they're down there again this season, so things aren't right. But wrote about it a little bit earlier today, and uh, you know, for me, it's still a better scenario than the one he came into here when it wasn't just uh, finding a head coach; it was a complete cultural shift um, dealing with as they've had to do in the in- intervening period. So much financial churn, um, shedding players left, right, and centre, um, literally just keep the club afloat. So. You might look at that, uh, just putting the your city hat to one side, and say it's a, probably a better scenario than he would have been faced with when he came in here. But um, yeah, I personally think yeah, I'd agree with you. I think there's probably more attractive propositions in the Premier League that might come available down the line. But um, the reality is, this won't be the last club he gets linked with if nothing actually materialises in terms of a firm approach. And and it, all it is at the minute is is potentially well informed, but still speculation. So. You know, ultimately, it's Stuart Webber to, to, to decide, isn't it? It's, it's his career. He, he felt, let's be honest, when he left Huddersfield, they were four or five months on a no hindsight. Yeah. But they were four or five months from being in the Premier League, yet he still felt this was a better opportunity yeah. for him and his career. If he feels Southampton ticks that box and the opportunity's there, then... Because people would have looked at that decision, Paddy, wouldn't they, and say, why would, he, why, would he want to, yeah. why would someone want to leave Huddersfield, who are on the up, to Norwich and the yeah. carnage that, that he faced he faced coming in here so would having done that you know firefighting job at Norwich would Southampton would he want to go in there and do another firefighting job or is that the kind of challenge that Stuart thrives on you know from when you put when you put your, your business hat on and, and that's where he wants to go to try and help a club and transform a club as he has done and as he deserves immense credit for doing behind the scenes here absolutely yeah I mean I just, just to add to that that I think his pronouncements when he first came and people asked that to him he said well you look at the league table as it was then well, surely Huddersfield's a better bet than Norwich and, and I think he more or less inferred that, that Norwich in terms of the support base in terms of the potential was much bigger than Huddersfield in his opinion now if he feels a Southampton or another club is again offers more potential than Norwich then he's really only repeating the career move that he made you know, when he came in first here so it is a concern, definitely, but unfortunately, that is the. And we, we've had it, we're, we're getting it with Farker, and now sadly we're getting it with Weber. We're also going to. We've seen it in recent days that Puki apparently was watched by one of the Turkish clubs here at the weekend. They sent their assistant coach, so that is inevitable when you're doing well and you're no longer under the radar. Sadly, it's just football, really, though, it's isn't it? It's just football, you know. and of course we'll keep an eye on it at Pinkin.com and uh, let you know how uh, all the speculation develops in turn uh, normally at this point we would do flip the bird but we're all standing up and I think we've inflicted enough on Jim to, the, to not put him through flip the bird next time Jim next time uh, we're going to be in the I've, pub I've been warming up I've been warming up getting there you know doing that baby shark thing has been keeping me you know <laughs> keep me going it's all Daniel fuck yeah, but we Dan, won't get yeah, into it is. that no it's great yeah um, that is a great one so um, we're going to skip that um, and hopefully we'll be back in a week's time. Remember, the show will be 6pm going forward. That's the plan most definitely. Uh, so instead, let's have a look at tonight's game. Why we're here, of course. Um, Norwich City Under-23 is their opening game in the uh, Premier League International Cup. It's quite a good competition, really, isn't it, Pat? Because they do seem to be able to pit their wits against some pretty big clubs in this competition. I mean, sometimes, I guess, the, the teams are maybe playing under-18s instead of under-23s and but things like that. But uh, it seems like a good test for them. Oh yeah, I mean just just the names in terms of the, the group they're in. Like there's six groups of four, I think, and Norwich have gone in with Bill Bow tonight, massive massive club in in the Bass region, um, Wolfsburg and Tottenham. So you would think whichever set of players those three clubs pitch up here with, they're going to be a decent test for this group of players. So yeah, I think there's a there's a lot made of development football and what it doesn't do in terms of preparing players, but. For me, in isolation, this sort of competition, you cut, you know, to come up against European opposition, and and the different nuances that that brings, I think, I think it's an excellent competition. And the last time they were in it, they got to the semi-finals. So, you know, you're winning games and you're playing against decent opposition. Why, what's the not to like about that? Uh, Timmy Odesina and Alfie Payne are both in the side tonight. They were both on the bench at Sheffield Wednesday. So, 
Uh, and of course, Todd Cantwell, who will no doubt be itching to get back in I think Yeah, minutes. Cantwell, I, I think Cantwell is, is a great player, you know, having seen him make the, make, make the step up this season. But it's as Paddy said, youth development in Norwich is, is so important and that could be a path that, you know, the club finds itself needing to go down, that we have to bring through talent. And maybe being a little bit cynical, but if the situation came where the books had to be balanced, then you know you've got these... You don't want to use the term assets, but let's face it, that's what all players are at, at, the, uh, at clubs nowadays. That by bringing through these players and playing in competitions like this, it's only going to give them experience so that when they do step up into the first team, they can make that seamless transition. And it's great that Daniel Farker is bringing the young kids through and getting them involved. And we saw with, with James Madison what, what he could do. And hopefully, you know, the, these young two guys, especially the fullbacks, it's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Seeing them, they almost play with no fear, and that could be really key for Norwich in the next six months. It certainly says a lot about how Max Aarons has been able to develop from, from going from the 18s to the 23s so quickly as well. Um, Matt Gill was, of course, in charge of this side at the start of the season. They've had a few iffy results since, um, since Gilly went down to... Uh, down, down south um, and David Wright who was under 18's coach he's in charge tonight Paddy I guess they're still trying to work out the long term arrangement as to who's going to take charge of the side going forward absolutely yeah and, it, and that isn't ideal because I think at this level as well it, Matty Gill was was excellent he had that bond with the players I mean I was out in Germany in pre-season and they were there as well training and, and you could just see it, it was a happy camp and they really respected him and, and what he was trying to impart. So to lose him will be a blow to these, these group of players and, and it does need resolved, I think, because as Jim rightly says, um, and we've seen the product of that with Lewis, with Aaron's Campwell, the steps into that first team are crucial, particularly when you get to the 23s, you know, and, and they need they do need to find a lasting solution. And uh, obviously they brought in, we touched on it right at the start, didn't we, this Christopher John, but. I think it remains to be seen if he is actually seen as a direct Gill replacement. I think from what I'm led to believe, he's more of an analyst, so that would lead you to think probably not, but they certainly do need new... If it's going to be David Wright, then it's David Wright, but then that obviously has a knock-on effect lower down, doesn't it? So it's, it's massively important because, as Jim rightly says, the way the club is geared now in terms of the finance, it's, if they don't produce players, they're going to find it very difficult to compete. Top stuff, Paddy. Um, so uh, the game kicks off at seven. Norwich City under 23s against Athletic Bilbao under 23s. Kick off at seven. Uh, coverage with Paddy uh, David throughout the uh, throughout the game, and of course all the uh, fallout afterwards too. Let's have a couple of messages on here. Peter Sunderland says he's listening from Vancouver, where it's probably colder than it is here. Do you reckon? No. Uh, I don't know. No, nowhere can be colder than it is here right now. Come on. Uh, Richard Russell says that it's a long time since City had a manager. Uh, uh, since a city manager has gone on to bigger and better things after Norwich I'd sit tight so there we go um, and Lisa Jack joins in good point arguably John Bond's the only one I can think of maybe Martin O'Neill who of course went on to Leicester yeah, yeah probably, prob 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 probably Martin O'Neill I mean we thinking about that from where you know when, when when Paul left and he went to Aston Villa you thought it was tailor made for him there and you know things didn't you know things didn't work out so um but uh, I, I think he's, he's got something going. He's got something, certainly got something going, uh, going, going here. So you know, hopefully he'll still see it right the way through to the development. Indeed. Uh, Tony Bisham says no one is allowed Temu Puki. And Ben Harold says no Puki, no party, which I guess is the same thing with different words. So there we go. Uh, right, uh, Norwich City notice board time. And it's uh, a couple of, uh, uh, three things we've got this time. I'm just going to crouch down here because uh, those regular viewers will know <laughs> I forgot this last week, so here it is. This is a. <laughs> oh, I'm never going to make it on QVC, am I? Is a personalised pink and mug, which I did forget to bring with me at the Warpack, and I'm delighted that I have remembered. And thankfully, you don't have to have Bailey on yours. All you need to do. This is a great advert, by the way. Stop smirking. Get one of them? Uh, no, and Paddy's still waiting on his as well. Um, all you have to do is visit pinkand.com/shop. And you can buy yours or even buy it as a present for someone else. Uh, someone called Lambert might be a good option. So there we go. A good Christmas present there, Jim. It's a great Christmas present from Uncle Billy. I'm going to go on and buy one of them. There you go. Brilliant. That's the no, spirit. That's the spirit. Do I get a discount? Uh, probably not. Uh, secondly, uh, the Norwich City Fan Social Club have announced their next evening. It's a casino and games night at Carrow Road on Thursday, December the 6th. It's uh, an adults only night. Um, it's the usual £3 entry with money being raised for the Community Sports Foundation. So note the night and get yourself along if you can. And you can visit ncfsc.co.uk for more details. And finally, well done to everyone at last week's On the Buzzer City quiz night. Our Archant team 
um, did a reasonable job until I embarrassingly got a Formula One question wrong and sports desk Pete Raven turned red at the revelation the Nile is apparently no longer the longest river in the world. Um, so uh, here's to the Community Sports Foundation and its Build the Nest campaign uh, that will have, I'm sure, benefited hugely from the night. Uh, remember, if there are any tweets, stories, events or groups of a canary's nature that you want to flag up with us here on the Pinkin Show and Norris City Notice Board, let us know via all the usual social media channels or send us an email to thepinkin at archant.co.uk. Are we all good, Dan? Are we happy? Yeah. Dan's happy. There's your copy of the championship slides gents it's an international break there's no way we're not addressing this here is the latest championship picture with the Sheffield Derby finishing goalless the Saturday action made up for the uh, lack of goals six at St Andrews a stunning win for Aston Villa at Frank Lampard's Derby five in West London and Ipswich even getting in on the act for all the good it did them West Brom rounded it all off by hammering Leeds and doing City a decent turn for two weeks so Ipswich remained five points adrift at the bottom after failing to beat either of Reading or Preston in recent weeks. Lambert joins with Ipswich three points adrift at five points adrift at the bottom, that is. Um, and if we have a look at the top half of the table, this is the one we all wanted to see. Norwich are top, two points clear of Middlesbrough and six now ahead of seventh. Uh, the first team to hit ten wins this term as well, despite five teams having lost fewer games. Uh, it's fair to say, however, the top half as a whole still cuts a tight affair. It's the international break, of course, but when the action resumes on Saturday week, City have a tough trip to Wales, with Ipswich kicking things off the evening before at home to West Brom. There's the second City derby on the Sunday before a full midweek schedule as Norwich head to Hull on Tuesday. 17 games in, gents. Can we say the table has shape to it? Well, I'm just trying to think what the table would have been like if Norwich hadn't had such a slow start. Um, I mean, look, it's, it's fantastic, isn't it? I think the key thing, as you pointed out, Michael, is the difference between seventh place. Um, Norwich have got a really, really good opportunity now to, at worst, finish in the playoffs. I think all of us would be very, very disappointed if that if that didn't happen. Um, and they also um, you know, have put themselves in a very strong position now to, to attack the top two. And it's all about momentum, but it's all about momentum at the key stage of the season. And we all know that's coming up, you know, sort of February, February and March. And just looking at the table, if you look down, and Paddy and I were just mentioning it there, some of these teams down here, any one of them can go on a run. And you can see any team can really break into the top six. But yeah, definitely, I mean, they, they, they have got a chance. Stuart Hodge on our podcast, he said Norwich are going up. He actually went on record and said it, didn't he, Pat? And you said being out of the top six by the end of the season would actually probably constitute a disappointment now. Yeah, well, echoing Jim's point, because the points are on the board now, that really the others are playing, well, below maybe Middlesbrough Leeds, Sheffield United, but certainly West Brom down, they are now playing catch-up. You know, there's this five points, six points. It doesn't sound a lot, but it, it certainly is in the incremental nature of the championship. So with that platform to kick on if they can steer clear of injuries to the key players for any length of time then why not turning for turning for January turning for home round about the same position then from there then definitely to tail away and finish outside the top six would be hugely disappointing and that's that's not a negative thing that's just credit to Farker Weber and those players that they're actually got us now thinking in Hodge's case, they're going up. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Um, of course, Norwich aren't playing this weekend, but they're playing at Swansea uh, next Saturday. Jim, let's have a quick look at your 11. I think it's that last uh, sheet there. Yeah. I don't know if I yeah. put them all in the right no, place. No, no, that's it. No, b b uh, better stab than I could do at the formation. But, I mean, look, it, if, 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 it's not, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He's, you know, he's stumbled across the, the formation that works for him, especially with the two young wing-backs, which you know, really, really give Norwich uh, something going forward. I just put Todd Campbell in there because the games I've seen him, I think he brings something else uh, brings something else to, uh, to the party. Um, Bernadette's uh, come along as well uh, and is a type of player who, who can unlock a defence. But it's all going to be now about Daniel Farker adapting these tactics and personnel for the key games, especially away from home. And the, champ the championship will have taken notice and they'll change how they it address will. Norwich. And, and, and it's, it's a relentless league and you said they Norwich play Swansea and then and then Hull. Get things wrong and all of a sudden th those six points are wiped out yeah. and Norwich are fifth or sixth. One. So, it, it, they, they, you know, so, sorry, so they, they, they've just got to keep things together. But um, Mr. Pookie, I'm going to have to, I, mean, I would take my hat off to him, but it's a little bit still cold. <laughs> do cold still um, he certainly you know found it and Norwich have found the best way to get him out of him um, you know in, in, in the old centre forward mould of 
you know, Norwich are used to playing with them, um, you know, one Grant Holt when he was here. Such ruthless finishing, especially for the first goal on Saturday. Uh, one quick question then, are Ipswich going down? No, Lambo's got too much to keep him up, I think. Oh, Still got okay. faith in the old boy. Still got faith. Yeah. Dan says yes, because that's what he does. Um, brilliant. So, uh, international break, uh, that's what is coming up this weekend. Um, anything picking your interest, Pad? Because... I, I kind of like it as a week off, if I'm honest, if we get off. Well, with Brexit, there's an Irish derby tomorrow to look forward to, so uh, we'll see how Jamal and Mickey McGovern get on. Uh, Tim Closer is not in Switzerland's 11 tonight, they've just been named, they're playing Qatar, but wouldn't surprise me if he did get a game later on. But um, anything keep catching my eye? No, other than we don't have what we had in the last international break, when Jim's just talked about him, Timu Puki carried off or whatever, walked off, looks like he's done his hamstring we don't need any of that spot on I completely agree and I suppose the other side of the international break we might be a bit closer to having Grant Hanley back on the bench and also Kenny McLean maybe too certainly Grant yeah I mean he's out there isn't he uh, in Tampa so um, I don't think he the other side of the break would be very far away at all in fact we briefly talked to him didn't we coming away from the training ground on Friday I think he he quite fancied having a run out on Saturday just gone but uh that would have been tough on uh, Closer and Zimmerman. And uh, that is that is a great scenario moving forward. Jim's talking about key players needing to perform. Well, you know, if you can get that competition in those key areas of the field, then it can only drive Norwich on uh, upwards and, and onwards, hopefully. Hang on, let's have a quick look at any more of your messages, see if what we can grab in. Answer these guys uh, quickly. Uh, Jacob Seaman, what January signings do we feel we need? Left back. Left back. Keep everybody, keep, keep, keep everybody fit. But I think Norwich are in a position where now they, they, they will need to go out and, 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 and bring somebody in just to give a signal that um, you know, they mean business. Uh, Jacob also asks, and he's not the only one by the way, Jordan Rhodes, shall we sign him permanently and if so, what price do you feel he's worth? It's not so much the price, I think it's his wages, you know, reportedly upwards of north of 30 grand a week. I think that would be too rich for Norwich in this league. They get themselves up to a whole different ball game. Uh, Alan Aston says, mind the gap PL. Uh, and also adds in, uh, we are giving away goals with our keepers. Mistakes. Should we have tried harder for Angus Gunn? Well, you're never going to get never going to get Angus uh, uh, again, will you? I think he's got his eye on bigger and better things. But you know, it, yes, Crawley he, he, he may be uh, susceptible to the odd uh, poor distribution or the odd clangor, but he also pulls off you know pulls 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 off some some great saves as well. And you know, when you've got a big Dutchman in goal, anything can happen, can't it? Eh? <laughs> well said, Jim. And uh, finally, Lisa Jack, if we beat Swansea, we will have 36 points from 18 games. Two point average means the P word. There we go. Uh, right, we are done. Time is rapidly uh, running away and kickoff here will be uh, with us soon. So uh, in that case, that is it from us for tonight. Uh, good luck uh, to Norwich City's under 23s. Uh, you can follow their progress, as I said, and all the reaction with Paddy over at pinken.com. Uh, and remember, you can catch this show and all our superb Norwich City content and coverage over at the Pinken's Facebook page, YouTube channel, and of course the brand new app. But first and foremost, pinken.com. Uh, we'll be back again next Wednesday evening in the warm... Uh, from our new regular, regu new regular time of 6pm live uh, from the Woolpack on Golden Ball Street in the centre of Norwich for another Pink and Show with all the usual fun and games. So please join us then, be it in the flesh, in the pub or online. Uh, in the meantime, a big thank you to our guests tonight, to Paddy and to Jim. Thank you, gents, so much. <coughs> oh, that'll have sent some dogs, Loopy, that one. Um, uh, to Norwich City Football Club for letting us do the show here tonight. We much appreciated it. To the crew, who is Dan, Sterling Work, Dan, well done. And of course, to you guys for watching, all your messages, getting involved. We really do appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you again next week. Until then, get rested, refreshed, find some sun and a lounger, <laughs> close your eyes and think of Tampa. And we'll see you back in Norwich's late autumn next Wednesday, still staring at the top of the championship. Good night. <laughs>